Welcome everybody to the BKPK podcast where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. We are here live in our Westchester studio. One of us could not be here today. That is Brandon. He is out of town this week visiting his parents, eating some hot jerk chicken and drinking <laughs> some cola champagne with a K. Don't forget the raw tea. And raw tea. <laughs> Now, just because Team BKBK is about to talk about the Jets-Bills game don't doesn't mean that you guys should turn us off. I would, but anyway, <laughs> sure. we actually have some interesting things to talk about and points to make. But first, before talking about the actual game, we're going to talk about Sam Darnold sitting out of his first game of the year. So, you know, let's get into it. But before we do that, um, we have something to play for you guys. Hey everybody, this is Brandon from the BKBK Podcast. I just want to just uh, give you a quick uh, thing that I'm thinking about. Basically, Sam Darnold was um, uh, in a walking boot all week. The Jets designated him as not playing. So I'm wondering if they're thinking about this as far as giving him a mental health day or are they giving him just uh, time to kind of recover because he does have a legitimate injury. I'm not sure if his injury is legitimate, I kind of want him to uh, be treated like Peyton Manning as far as playing all the games. Peyton Manning had a rookie year. He came out 3-13 uh, and 13 season, then his sophomore season ended up being 13-3. and three. So I'm just wrestling with this internally. I'm just not sure um, uh, how to process this. So you guys let me know. All righty. Take care. All right. That was your man Brand in there. Yeah. Is, is he bro he's broadcasting straight from Walmart? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> there are the dollar stores, one or the other. <laughs> the personal articles <laughs> aisle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he just needed to get something. <laughs> mm. 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 Anyway, man, so uh tch. Hey. Okay, so b before we get into the trash, and it's literally trash, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about Sam Darnold and his injury, oh, right? Uh, so he he was out. Um, they had the walking boot. Uh, Brandon's question was that an excuse or was that a true injury as, as part of that? Um, I think it's a, a true injury per absolutely, se. I, absolutely, I, I, I remember seeing him limping off the field. I mean, you know, I, I think if this was a situation where he was the veteran quarterback and we were in contention. Playoff, run. Uh, playoff, have a playoff run. We were in contention for the playoffs. Then clearly he would have played. I mean, this is this is about protecting your asset. This is about. Well, he's gotten he's gotten sacked about twenty two times this absolutely. year too. They, absolutely, they pulled that that stat up today um, while the game was going on. That how many sacks the the Jets have given up. So it's like it's not like he hasn't taken any. And um, you know that the, there's a lot a lot of um, he's durable, but there's a lot of hits being being taken out on them game by game yeah i agree uh i think it's the same as well and and um is there an added benefit to that by having him sit and and uh mccown going out there uh prior to the bills game i would say yeah um <laughs> after the bills game again we'll get into that later but uh I, I don't think he learned much from this particular performance of of mccown's career but yeah I, he i think he learned a lot i think he learned he's you know this team stinks that's what he learned, <laughs> and it's not my fault. That's what he learned. It and ain't I, my I, fault, right? And I think sometimes you got to sit on the sidelines and 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 see that. I mean, I I, I had this, this. I wanted to have this discussion with you when we were together yesterday uh -huh. about why I thought it was um, okay for him to sit. Um, and I mean, I think it was it was it's twofold. I mean, the question is, um, I, I, I the analogy is, are we driving? a Porsche or are we driving a Hootie? And if there's something wrong with how it's being driven, is it the driver or is it the actual car? You know what I mean? From, so from my perspective, um, I wanted to see if it was Darnold that was the one that was, you know, clearly not driving this thing the way it was supposed to be driven. Okay. And um, clearly we see that's not the case. You know, it, the same issues that were arising when he was behind center were totally the case with McCown behind center. So, um, you know, it's the car. You know what I mean? It's not the driver. But, we have a hoopty. We but, don't have a Porsche. Uh, okay. Uh, Kyle, we, you we, to say we, something? We, 
we definitely don't have a porch. We can establish the fact that um, I think we're, we're talking about that. more. Like, I think like we're maybe on like a, a Chevy. Like we, we could have argued that we had like a reliable like a Priest Chevrolet. Classic. <laughs> yeah, like one of those like what we one got of those, like a 97 the, the impala maybe you know yeah. right that's There's not lowered issues. ain't got no rims <laughs> ain't be got no rims you, ju- you just <laughs> described like every unmarked police car um, <laughs> well so uh well but yeah like m- maybe we had that but but um the hoopty analogy i think that i got i got some case in points for that all right mm-hmm. so terrell Pryor started the game in the four receiver sets for the Bills, and they have a better wide receiver core currently than we have, yet we let a guy go off a groin injury that is playing three weeks later that would be helping us right now yeah. as a receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, like those little things, that, that just points right back to the – Brilliant. To the, to the hoopty uh, <laughs> analogy. Right, right. But um, but there's there's more, there's more to that, and I'm sure that you guys have some. I, I'm sure that the guy that brought up the hoopty has some more examples of it. I mean, but all right. So so who's who, who's in charge of us being a hoopty, right? Uh, it, you know, we could talk about that too. I mean, that to me that speaks to McCagnin. I mean, McCagnin, you know, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's McCagnin is is who creates the car, right? Right. I mean, well, okay. A, a, a McLaren is not a hoopty, but a McCagnin. Is obviously a hoopty mm-hmm. at this point. <laughs> absolutely, man. Absolutely. And then, um, yeah, so, and then Bowles would be what? The mechanic? You know, he's the guy that's working on the, the vehicle every day to make sure that it's working at yeah, this optimal position. Absolutely. I would say position. That. he's the head mechanic. Oh, yeah. Head mechanic in right. there, you know, making sure when the pit stop, you come in and he's, you know, lubing it up and doing whatever he needs mm. to do and putting the right tires on it. Um, but if he's, he's spe- if he, right, but if he doesn't have, um, equipment to either fix it or to maintain it or to, you know, he's got old tires that he's putting on this thing or he's got a steering co- steering column that is, you know, uh, refurbished and it ain't working. They're, those are the parts that we are working with, you know. Sure, wow. sure. But I, I also think that you can have an opportunity, even if it's that 97 Impala, it can get on the highway and right. run pretty good for yeah. a 97 Impala, right? Could, I mean, you could, know, th- there, are, there are varying levels of a 97 Impala being on the road, right? Yeah, is, it, is it rusting underneath yeah. or or does it look clean? I mean, right. it, it could look like it's a, it's a yeah. throwback joint. It's shining. Yeah. I got pride in my vehicle, yeah. you know. I'm, I'm rusty I'm, and dirty right now. Yeah, man. You know, it, it, yeah. it's there's a 97. You, you don't want to get on the highway on because you don't know nah. if you're going to actually make it from A to B and back to mm, A. You're going to be standing on the side so, of the highway. So I think, and that that's part of my conversation conversation that we were having last week and just dismantling this whole thing right. as far as the the coach has to go you can't keep McCagnin if you're going to keep the coach right because for a couple of things and we were talking about that during the week um a he is in charge of the vehicle and the way it looks right now right so that's really him at the end of the day to its core but then in addition to that if you have somebody that you want to bring in from a coaching standpoint are they going to be able to work with McCagnin? Are they going to be like, I'm not, I'm not coming because you already have a GM in place that you want to keep. Right. And now if we overlap that by a year and then we keep McCagnin, we bring somebody in that's kind of strong or whatever. Um, and then we still don't do well. What do you do at that point? Then you get rid of McCagnin. Then you bring somebody else in. It, it's just, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. If you're going to clean house, then you accept the fact that both people are at full in where we are today and just get rid of both. Well, I'm, I'm going to chime in here real quick just because I wasn't on last week and I listened to you guys had a great vent session. Sure. It was almost therapeutic, I think, for you. It was like group therapy. Oh, very. I, we, um, the only thing missing was the couch. Right. Yeah. Oosa. So, <laughs> I mean, and, and, and I, I, I told you during the week, Brian, that I totally agreed with you as far as McCagnin at this point in time. Um, and, you know, if you looked at any of the Facebook groups, like the big uh, Alex Klein Facebook group that's on yep. uh, that, that, that we're all part of, um, the Fire Bowls talk has hit fever pitch. Sure. Uh, we're, we're at the point now where I would say probably 50 percent of Jet fans would not have been surprised if he got fired at halftime. Uh, if they like, <laughs> you know, they went inside and they said, you know, uh, we're good. But the problem with that is and I was thinking about this. 
who would be the interim coach? You have nobody on staff that, that is you veteran could enough. put out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't. Jeremy Bates, no. prob- his his seat is as hot as as Bulls' seat is. Mister Creativity, uh, Jeremy Bates. Um, they made that comment um, on the on the show. <laughs> I was like, "What?" James James Lofton being funny, but the only possible person that you could make the interim head coach is the special teams coach. Yeah, and um, I think his name is uh, Bob something. I, I I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, just call him Bob. Bob. It's so generic. <laughs> just Bob call him something. Bob. Yeah, but. <laughs> But but that but that's my point is that sure, sure. You, can't, you can't you can't fire an one of thirty two NFL head coaches a guy who's reached that pinnacle in the middle of a season if you don't have somebody to be the interim like you fire Hugh Jackson you had two former head coaches on staff that could step right in and um and be the interim and apparently Todd Haley thought that he was gonna be before they told him really? to get lost. Yeah, that's what I read this week. That that he was under the impression that he was going to be named um, interim head coach, and then <laughs> I know you didn't. <laughs> yeah, when they when they when they called him into the office, they were like, "No, that's not." Uh, no, that's not what this meeting is about. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, it's but it's not. We don't have that situation. So I think that there's not going to be a move made with Bulls until the end of the season. Um, I think I'm going back to what I said in the off season last year too about uh, Josh McCown. I thought that we had we had topped out on Josh McCown, and I don't think he has had a lot around him today by any means. But for us to think that he was going to be he was going to stay as good as the best that he was at 36 years old or whatever it is that he is, um, you know, we topped out at that. So I'm not surprised by what we saw from him today. He he threw the he threw bad interceptions today. He threw like mm-hmm. interceptions that didn't have to happen. The the one to um to the Italian linebacker that that the broadcasters love, Mike Milano or whatever his <laughs> name was. <laughs> Man, I mean that that guy was MVP of the league according to the to the two guys, um, Catalan and James Lofton. Um, I don't think I don't think Darnold looked good too, but um, I think both of these guys got to go at this point. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, I I think it's going to be at the end of the season, and I'm and I'm okay, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's not like changing the coach is going to do anything for us, and it's not like we're this is going to be sort of a an interview uh, for the head coaching job if we slot somebody in there um, who's on our coaching staff right now anyway. So yeah. uh, I'm okay with just leaving at leaving it at status quo. And um, going full bore on a full search of a um, general manager and and head coach, you know, at the end of the uh, y- year. <clears throat> I, I I don't know. I I don't know who else we have on that offensive staff. Um, so you do make a good point, Kyle, uh, from that perspective on who we have in house. Uh, I would say if if Casey Rogers wasn't you know going through some health concerns that I would just hand over the ship to him for the last couple of games. Um, because at this point, we just – we need a spark. I mean, you, you're going to throw Donald back out there. He's going to play the Patriots twice. He's going to play Green Bay, and he's going to play Houston, in mm-hmm. addition to the Buffalo teams that just waxed us 41-10. to 10. So my concern is him, and it's all about him. Uh we need to do something different. We can't come out there with bowls with no expression on his face again. And if we're losing to the Buffalo bills, 41 to 10, the team gave up. That wasn't about the bills being better than us. Just like the, you know, the Miami game, at least, you know, Miami, we fought and we lost. This game was an indictment from the beginning. We were down 31 to three, 31, nothing. First of all, Mm -hmm. the the team gave up. And the defense has been the only side of the ball that you could say consistently came through with effort from the first snap until the end. We didn't always see the results from that because, again, lack of talent or the offense just left the defense out to dry. But to not have any sort of effort out of the entire team, that was an indictment of bowls. Like, you know what? They heard all the stories in the media this week. They heard Bowles was on the hot seat. They heard that if we lose this game, there's no way they're going to bring him back. 
And what do they do? 41 to 10. So this is mm-hmm. really what I'm more concerned about. I'm not concerned about who's going to X and O it from now until the end. Uh, I just want us to get back to the point where we're actually putting out a full effort and the defensive side of the ball is the only side that actually has done that week in and week out prior to today. So that being the case, I would give it to Casey Rogers if his health is good enough in order to get us through the last couple of games. I didn't include Casey Rogers in that statement because of the health problems. Um, and I don't, I don't know of any head coaching experience that Casey Robert Rogers has either. Yeah, um, that's fine. You know, so the, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, that's the only reason why I didn't in- include him in that. There was a point in the third quarter, about five minutes left in the third quarter, they had Buffalo third and 19 and it was on the drive that they made at 38, 10. And if they had, got them off the field at that point. I felt like the momentum was shifting a little bit. We had just scored a touchdown. Um, we come out, we stop them. We get the ball back on offense. Um, Elijah McGuire was running the ball. All right. You know, we were, we were getting a little things going, but then we, they convert to, and let's, let's face it. You know, like how much of this is coaching? Sean McVay didn't exactly put a porch on the field either. He had he got a, a quarterback off the street. We got beat by a quarterback off the street. <laughs> they were alluding to the fact right. that he was playing in a park last week. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. So, like and he was one in seven as a starter. One in seven as a starter prior to today. And I mean he, two and seven. Yeah, crazy. Two and seven? Now he is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the dude is two to two and seven, because again, all records get broken against the New York Jets. Yeah, of course. You know, this is who we are. You know, we're record breaker, right. but in a negative sense. Right. It's painfully <laughs> similar to what Brandon said uh, last week. It's like, if there's a guy that's going to come in and do something, it's have a always career. going to be against us. Have a career day like this. He's going to yeah. make his career. He will never play like he played today in the rest of his entire career. He actually, he's probably going to be back on the street tomorrow because Josh Allen comes back off an of injury. He's probably going to be yeah. back on the street tomorrow. Like, all right, thanks. Appreciate it. You beat the Jets 41-10. to 10. Now go back some groceries. Now, I like, yeah, to, I like, to, I like to address the whole quitting on the team. Um, Let's talk about it. I don't, I'm, I don't think the, the, the score alone is going to reflect that specifically. I did, I did see effort. I didn't see anything that indicated to me that any specific player or any side of the ball decided, you know, we're not going to play anymore today. We're, we've given up. I just think that they were just in, inept. I think um, the offense was just struggling from day one, I mean, from, from play one. And I think that the defense um, just had a bad day. I mean, you know, I don't I don't want to say that this team I again without having any clear indication from any specific side of the ball or any specific play or what, what have you um to indict uh to indict them to say that they uh gave up on this game just because of what the what the score ended up being to me it wasn't it wasn't just the score mm-hmm. it was the you know, listen. It's forty-one to ten, and then you play four quarters, mm-hmm. and, and you spread out the, the scoring. Okay, fine. You know, it was fourteen nothing against a team that hadn't scored in the first quarter. Yeah, or, or I, you know what I mean. I, I totally agree. I Twenty-four mean, points in I mean, three games. I mean, we were down seven nothing with forty Two seconds plays. into the game. Two forty plays. seconds into the game. Yeah, I, I definitely get that. But I mean, again, it was it was we were loading up for the run, and. Jermaine Johnson got beat. You know what I mean? And then the play after that was um was um Yeah, Shady McCoy Shady off McCoy, of the right side. Off and the right side. Didn't get touched. Didn't get didn't get touched. I, I get it. I get it. But again, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? So sometimes that kind of stuff happens. They were in a they were caught in a situation where they shouldn't have been in, in terms of not identifying, you know, that there was a a a a receiver. You know, they would have we would have taken that matchup every time, you know, Tremaine Johnson on the side on the on on that side by himself matched up against their 
receiver. We would have taken that matchup. He well, just failed. Well, that's that's really questionable as far as Tremaine Johnson in general because he, he hasn't – he's made one good play, I think, all season as I, far as I've seen. I, I recognize <laughs> so, that. But, but again, yeah. he's our number one, right? We're paying him all this money. The fact that at, at the end paycheck. of the day – Yeah, I get it. But based at the end paycheck. of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm lining him up and saying, look, you know, this is what we're paying you for. Make it happen. We, we, got, we got eight in the box. Mm-hmm. Did he – even look pissed off and to that Tremaine Johnson play mm-hmm. pissed off that he gave up that play. I don't recall. I don't I, recall how, how we, that, what his reaction was. That's kind of what I was looking at. I mean, did, it did didn't you, even, did you see his reaction? It didn't even look like he was as long as you pissed not, off. I mean, I, okay. I didn't see, I didn't, you know what I mean? Don't if, blame anybody else, but yourself be pissed off at yourself. But, yeah. but, but to me, I was watching everybody's body language mm-hmm. and that's what I just felt like. In general, okay, the so entire you're saying what their team, body language looked like. I, I didn't see anybody pissed off that they, they were losing forty-one to ten. They, like they expected it, right? I, I didn't see anybody like, come on, like you know, p- get pissed off at your at your neighbor, at your you know your 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 teammate, and say, yo, what's going on? Blah blah blah, like you know, something. Mm-hmm. I didn't see anything. Yeah. I didn't see any energy. I didn't, and I, I think the the um the commentators kind of spoke to that a little bit. Um, yo, if something's going wrong. Let's let's get in the huddle. Let's 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 talk it out. Bowls, pull the entire team together. Never does. You that. know what I'm saying? Pull pull the entire off defense and say, yo, what's going on out here? Never we got to do this. We got to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, even if you're gonna do it in your bland vanilla type of way, right. like you do, and mm-hmm. not show any emotion, then you got to at least pull them together and and say something to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would I would agree with that, but that's not in his character. That's not how he he carries himself. That's not well. The, nobody on the MO. team. Well, well, Jamal Adams is that character, and right. I didn't see him. You know, like either. do it, do that with the defense and mm-hmm. say, hey, you know, he's the he's that leader. He's that fiery person. Mm-hmm. Then that would be the person that would do that. Right. Nothing. He he has the what, demeanor what, what, of a defensive what, coordinator. What about Kevin Green? You know, Kevin Green. We we know him as a fiery guy. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, he, he's on the sideline. Um. You know, it's it's like. You're right. You know where where is the, the the come on guys let's go type of um, oh. thing going on. <laughs> oh no! Gosh. Oh no! They, they, this had to come out. Oh. You know what I mean? Because oh, this is what God. I felt like. I mean, I guess we're transitioning into the actual yeah game, game discussion analysis without talking about right. it. But after the game, this is what I feel like. Oh my god! Can well, I Brian's like- got Brian. You got the Porsche paper bags on your uh, head. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. It's not. Not wall bombs or uh, wall bombs don't even <laughs> exist anymore. Listen, no, listen. they don't. I, I'm, I'm trying yourself. to. I'm trying to eat healthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, food, Grand. son! Come on, get with Grand. it. Give it the program. Grand Union. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is, right. this is what I feel like out here, man. Right. It's crazy. And I, and I also want to show this is this is not. I'm not cold. It's not like my brother's not paying the the, the, the electric bill up in this piece. <laughs> this is this is my shroud of Turin or my shroud of misery. <laughs> my jet shroud of misery because I am just tired. I am awesomely tired. I'm so upset. This is just killing me. This is ridiculous. Why can't we win? Why can't we beat a team that is supposed to be supposed to be less talented than we are? It just makes no sense to me. I'm so tired of losing. Well, I jinxed the whole thing by saying that we yeah. had to beat. Uh, yeah, that was on my Buffalo mind too. Yeah, that was on my mind yeah. too. I was about to say that. Um, I don't um, think you jinxed us. I just think that that was true. And then progressively, as the season wore on, we have now lost complete confidence in anything. Well, that's what McCagnan and Bowles are going to say in the press conference that Kyle jinxed them. That's <laughs> going to be the reasoning. Going to say it in a deadpan voice. Yes. You know, Can mm-hmm. we keep our jobs did, now? He, it's Kyle's fault. He did, he did jinx us. Um, but we're going to. You want to talk about um, Mr. Creativity, Jeremy Bates, and. Uh, the offense that we put. Yeah, let's put get into the there. game. Let's okay. get into the game. And and when I when I tw- so let's talk about that. Let's talk specifically about that. It was the same exact plays going for no gain or not making first downs. So, so again, it was it's it's the car, it's the automobile, it's the vehicle that we are driving, that the Jets are driving. No, again, no creativity, no change in scheme. No change in uh, in your ability to um, you know sort of uh, you know, the execute the scheme. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So we had somebody in there that was that is a veteran, a pros pro, and 
even he had difficulty making any type of uh, movements, making any type of having having a pocket at all to operate in. You know, how many times did he get sacked today? How, how many, many times, times did he have he a hurried? Pa- did he have a uh, did he have a pass, pass deflected? Down? Right. That was it's, like at least five. I I could at tell you right five. this: if if we did nothing but but close our eyes and listen to the cast of the game, I would have told I could I would have told you that Darnold was still in the game, based on how the offense operated, based on him being sacked, based on batted down balls, based on all of the same things um, that Darnold has been dealing with. You know, the first what us. Uh, nine games of the season. Mm -hmm. So what has, what changed? Absolutely nothing. Just a driver. And the the results the same. I think Darnold would have, would have brought at at least a little bit of maneuverability. Mobility. That Josh McCown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't, didn't really bring to it. Um, I mean, if you look at it, let's say that there is five sacks in the game Mm -hmm. and five batted down passes, that's 10 non opportunities uh, for a completion, right? Even we had at least three drops. Terrence Cannon dropped two balls. Yeah. Um. Somebody else dropped the ball as well. They tried to get Herndon involved. Um. Where Sorry. they got Herndon involved, it wasn't really. Um. It wasn't really that upfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And the same thing with Quincy Anunwa. A lot of the batted down passes were to Quincy Anunwa. Um. While on the other side of the field, you're seeing. The Bills get really imaginative. They throw uh, a fake. They do a fake punt um, yep. with their their former QB turned tight end throwing a ball to this guy Foster, who burnt us on the first play of the game and on that play, um, who also was like a street free agent, I believe, or went away for over a hundred yards in the game. Yep, and uh, course career high. And nobody had him in fantasy, so nor would um, they. Yeah. <laughs> fantasy. Um, and, they had him in then, reality uh, football. Not yeah, even fantasy football. They they had um a, a starting uh, rookie at uh, left tackle, um that um that at one point pancaked uh, Henry Anderson so badly that they rewound it and went back over it. <laughs> and, <laughs> And, and and said you rarely uh, see somebody in an NFL game get this. And I love Henry Anderson. I think yeah, Henry yeah. Anderson. I was, think that was a yeah, good pick up. No pick disrespect, up, yeah. but pancake no is disrespect. a pancake. Yeah, it did. Well, I saw it when it first happened, and I'm like, oh man, I hope that they don't say nothing about that. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> um, it's it's slow mode. But I mean, it's I, 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 I'm just I'm looking at like you know the the Bills' creativity with Brian Dable on offense um, to try to get something going was. Um, kind of a breath of fresh air to us who are watching Jeremy Bates struggle right now to get anything going. And, you know, I don't want to put all the blame on him either because he he's not an experienced play caller, um, or at least he hasn't done it in a while, and he doesn't have a lot to work with. Um, the front office has not put us in a good situation um, receiver-wise at, at all. <laughs> Let's talk about um, that. Where's our yeah, Darius so, Stewart? Where's Chad Hansen? And these are these are guys that were drafted in seventeen. Draft and draft. You know yep. where 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 is Devin Smith? You understand? Street clothes. Where's Sharon Peak? He's on the sidelines dropping passes. No, he he caught one and then dropped another probably. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. So at least at least Sharon Peak is good at special teams too. You know, uh, he he does contribute there. But you didn't you don't draft a guy unless he's a returner for special teams specifically. Yeah, right? but Sharon Peak Sharon Peak was a seventh round draft pick. Right, but my point is that I'm, I'm we waited until the seventh down, round. Right, I'm, in running, order to I'm running down from 2017 right. to now the wide receivers that we have picked up are Darius Dewitt, Chad Hansen, Sharon Peak, Devin Smith, Jalen Saunders, Shaquille Evans. That's from 17 to 14. That's got to be fit. And, De- Devin me, Smith, I think, is fit. And Quincy Anunwa. Devin Smith's got to be fifteen. He didn't pick He's, up a new is, one. He, Devin Smith is fifteen. Right. But I'm talking about and just in general. So if we're talking about just for McCags, uh-huh. then it would end at Devin Smith. It would right. end by Devin the way, Smith. right? By by the way, JoJo Natson is playing for the Rams. Might wind up with the Super Bowl ring this year. Just want to throw that in there. It's a great name too, JoJo Natson. 
your boy Jojo Nats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, Quincy is 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 fourteen. Yeah, and Quincy's on Itzik's roll. Is it, uh, he's on Itzik's roll. He's probably the only person that Itzik actually drafted that's still on the Jets. Uh, so when you look at the ineptitude of Idzik plus McCagnan, I mean, we couldn't have made worse decisions as far as the general manager position is concerned. And these people hold positions for like th- at least three, four years. You're talking about a decade. You're talking about like a decade of not being able to bring in talent to an organization. I mean, it, it, you know, just let that sink in for a little bit. A decade. I mean, man, so so <laughs> that's crazy. It's just it's really crazy to to do that. And, well, it, mm. and then you have to develop these individuals. So it takes some time from that perspective, too. So it puts a longer tail on some of these people. You hope that Donald is the guy. Um, well, you, again, so so you're talking about, uh, you know, close to a decade in terms of not sure. bringing, bringing in talent. We have brought in talent on, in the earlier rounds. I think what 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 we're what we're addressing is the later round talent that they've decided to bring in that just hasn't, um, you you know, been able to get on the field and stay on the field and been effective. But uh, to me, it's still TBD on some of that first round talent that we've been able to bring in and people that have fallen to us Mm -hmm. that, yeah, they start besides Jamal Adams. um, I mean, even Leonard Williams, I mean, you know, is he an impact player this year? Hmm. You know, hmm. he, he, when you're talking about somebody that's, that's drafted in the first six picks, you're talking about somebody that you want to make the Pro Bowl. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a bare minimum. You, you would hope, yes. yeah. Yeah, a, a Pro Bowl type yes. of person that is thought of in that, that light every single year, for the most part. I mean, you have bad years here and there, whatever hmm. the case may be, but we've been drafting so high in the first round that you assume that these people should be Pro Bowl eligible type of players. Right. I don't see that on our team. Besides the Jamal Williams, uh, Jamal Adams will probably make the Pro Bowl this year. Um, I, I don't think anybody else on the Jets will or will get any type of serious consideration, even if, you know, we, well, again, I, I don't want to say even if, but again, right now, I don't see that talent. I don't see Pro Bowl level talent at any position that we have besides Jamal. Kicker and punter. Kicker, kicker. I was going to just going to say that. Yeah. But when you're leaning on that, <laughs> right? Oh, you know, I, know, I, know, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tongue in cheek, obviously, was the commentary. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's you know, it's bad, man. It's bad. It's bad. I, I, I don't I don't know where we go unless they totally just clean house as far as the 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 coaches and the GM and have somebody that actually makes a good decision for those positions you see the, the other thing that i want to address is you know what, what you'll hear from the pundits is you know mccags has gonna is gonna have so much money to spend in this off season so the question is do we want him spending that money no you know and and that goes back to when when idzik had all of that money that saved up and mccags came and spent that money um in the year that he came mm-hmm. right so how what did he do i think mccags record as a free agent acquisition type guy is a lot better than his record as a drafter. You know, can we, is that safe to say? Mm-hmm. Right. I think that's, that's pretty safe to say. I mean, it's, there's, there's not a significant discernible difference between the two, <laughs> right. but if I had to vote, I would say he's better at bringing in free agents. <laughs> right. right? Cause, Cause the drafting bar is like here. Right. And so then right. it's so low that yeah, right. the free agency bar is like right there. Right. So, but this year, I would say that, you know, it's it's really balancing in, itself out in terms of the free agents that he brought in this year because they're, they're not bearing the fruit that I think that we would have we, – we wanted them to bear right now. We're talking about Tremaine Johnson, who hasn't been able to stay on the field. Yeah. We're talking about our center, who is, you know, who can't snap, can't snap, snap the ball, the ball sure. you know, on the, to the broad side of a barn. You know, we're, we're talking about um, – well, Claiborne was a a resign, you mm-hmm. know what I mean. So, I, but I I definitely you know, absent this week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> notwithstanding this week, I think he's been he's been a good signing. Um, solid. Not, I think he's not, been a solid. Exceptional. He's been a solid signing. Um, but you know, 
other than that, you the, mentioned the Henry Anderson, agents, right? You mentioned Henry Anderson. I Henry, guess. Henry Anderson was a was a re, was a was a was a, that was a uh, trade. Was a trade. Trade. Was a trade. So, so acquisition. Little, I mean, I put that on yeah. your on your your role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what yeah. say you, McKenna? So, I'm I'm listening to what you guys are saying, and and what what it brings to mind to me is like how there's an emotional and opinion based discussion here where it's like. Um, why didn't you pick this guy or why didn't you pick that guy? This would have been better. And it, it seems like there's, there's kind of like a right or wrong here in analytics. When you, when you, when you really break it down, like I would imagine that if you're going to come in and you're going to rebuild the franchise, you're going to analytically look at the five, let's say the five best franchises in the NFL and how they got that way. All right. So, you know, I'll just say some names, you know, off the bat, like the green Bay Packers, the, um, the New England Patriots, the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, the you know the Eagles, um, Kansas City Chiefs. What was the system that they used? You know what 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 was their system for evaluating free agents, plugging and playing, and then evaluating draft picks? And what was their success rate based on things? And how much of that did they reach for based on need, or were they just getting the best person? with the most money they had in the marketplace. And I think that's the big difference. I think that the, the places that are, that, that are doing a good job in developing talent, sure. especially, especially Pittsburgh and new England, um, they're doing so by knowing the type of player they want to get and then developing the talent there. And um, they're not um, so much into who's the best player available at the price that I can pay him. Whereas that, I feel is the way that we've been doing things. And you hit with a guy like Avery Williamson, where he was the best player available with the money we had to spend on it. And you do well, and you don't necessarily hit with the Tremaine Johnson, um, even though he was the best player available and we had the money to pay him. Um, But you see it with like, if we drafted Chad, uh, Chad Hansen in the fourth round and we had high hopes for him, why did he all of a sudden not, develop into a better player than he was before he went the opposite way and now he's not even on our team anymore and that's where i think the indictment comes like what have we done to in player development to put to get the guys that we drafted and make them better players because everybody has the same amount of money right we're all playing with a salary cap so if everybody has the same amount of money what are you doing to make your players work with your system. And if you change coaches every four years, if you change GMs every four years, obviously you have no sort of system at all for any of that stuff. And I thought that I thought McCagnum was coming in with the system from Houston, Bill O'Brien, all that stuff. And I don't know. I don't see it. Like Hackenberg. Um, you know, why do you take a chance on on, on a guy like Hackenberg oh my God. when when if you have a system and you have analytics in place, that second round draft pick is basically a a, a low first rounder. That was a personal you know, decision. It's, it seemed like that was a personal decision for him. I think the the connections were there for him, and it was just a matter of him connecting the dots to say, I want to bring this kid in. You know, I think it was more of an emotional yeah. decision. Yeah, so I'm trying to I'm trying to take my emotions as a fan out of it and look at it more as a as an analytical, you know, money ball type thing. And if we are looking at it as a money ball type thing, I think that he has not, he has not performed. He has not gotten us into the playoffs. He has not built a team in which we can, uh, that, that we could say got better every year that he was in control of it. And now I think it's reached kind of the end of that. So that's what I say about that. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, some of the, the teams that you were referencing, um, is the longevity that they've been there so you can actually implement the system over a period of time because uh, I know, you know, Pittsburgh didn't hit on all of their picks and New England didn't hit on all of their Absolutely picks. Absolutely not. And, New England did um, not. Kansas City, uh, I'm, I'm sure there too, but you have a coach in all of those systems that put together, strung together wins and mm-hmm. some victories there so that it kept things intact. And so you, you had enough time in order to, you know, get rid of some parts and bring in some additional parts. And um, but ultimately, most of that was through the draft. 
You know, right. they, we, not for free agency. Most of that was through the draft. And they were able to develop their players. When you look at um, Kansas City, the team that they've been able to draft on the offensive side of the ball over the past two to three years, Tyreek Hill was three years ago. Um, the running back was was last year. and No, no, no. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the running back was last year. So was the quarterback was last year, too. So just those three right there, Kelsey was years past too, but also a draft pick. You know, the things mm-hmm. that they've been able to do with that team through the draft and their um their one free agency acquisition, the wide receiver who um and his name escapes me, he came from Buffalo and ended up going out to uh the Rams or somewhere. Um I forgot his name. But anyway, he's not even playing. Sam- Sammy Watkins. Yeah, Sammy Watkins. He's not even playing. Yeah. <laughs> right, now. They don't, right, right. I'll yeah. give I'll give you a, I'll give you another example that's not as apparent. I went to the Seattle Chargers game last week. Yep. And by the way, the experience of going to a game at Century Lake Field. I'm sure. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm like sure. it blew MetLife away. Like mm. everyone is engaging in the game mm-hmm. the whole time. Mm. The stadium is so loud. It was loud from the beginning till the end. But you look at a team like. Seattle. Seattle went through a total rebuild this year. They jettisoned all almost all their good players and they're still in contention in the in their conference. And they're playing the Rams right now and you know they you know they're not exactly in a good position, but they're not they're not out of the woods um when it comes to, you know, contending for a conference um title or uh, not a, a division title or making the playoffs. Right. And that about, that about comes from system too. I'm about to say something. Yeah, system too. But let's let's be clear. What what do we have that has been that is um, consistent amongst all the teams that you mentioned? Quarterback. The fact that quarterback. They have a quarterback. The fact that they have a quarterback. You, then you don't yeah. have to draft. You don't have to have use your draft capital in the earlier rounds for um, a quarterback. You're not constantly searching for a quarterback. If you if you're you, right. If you recall, it's Bryce Petty. It is Christian Hackenberg. It is now it's it's Sam Darnold, you know. Prior to that, it was um, but Gino, Gino Smith. But this is the first. And, this this and, is the first first round draft pick we've used on a quarterback, right? This I, is this I, is. I a, don't disagree okay. with you, okay. but my point is that you know when you have that centerpiece of your team, not just of your offense or your defense, but your, the centerpiece of your team then you can afford to make mistakes. And if you look at some of the mistakes that the um, that the Steelers have made in terms of drafting and specifically the Patriots have made in terms of drafting, they're cleaned up because of the coach and because of the quarterback. And we haven't had either of those things consistently for the last 10 years. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. So, you know, we're going to – I'm hopeful that we're gonna get there, but um, right now it it doesn't look good, guys. It doesn't look good. I think we've gone like extended tweak me peak me uh, with no peak me. <laughs> All right, so so we 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 just right right, but let's go through it. Let's go through it though. Right. <laughs> Tweak Me Peak Me has a uh, decidedly Calypso feel to me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I was uh, eating some roti at the time when I made it. <laughs> Carnival. Right. So what we got? We got Tweak Me Peak Me. Yo, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Let's talk about the Tweak Me Peak Me. Who wants to go first? Me. So <laughs> go ahead, yeah, man. Handle the, that. the Tweak Me is Handle clearly that. our general manager and our coach. And I mean, we we have talked ad nauseum about how these guys have not lived up um, to the expectation, Um, whether we're talking about Bulls and his ability to get the team to play the way in which they should be playing in terms of in in a disciplined way, you know, in a way um, that uh, takes uh, everything that you that 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 is on the field. And and you can use and use in a manner in which is efficient. We haven't been able to do that. And when, and when we're talking about our um, 
general manager? Have we been, again, have we been able to draft properly? Have we been able to be active in, in free agency and make um, <clears throat> um, efficient picks as far as that's concerned? And, you know, and the answers are, are no. I mean, I'm, I'm giving both of them a, th- a, 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 a thumbs down. Can we get an F minus? Is that is F, that a grade? Yeah, I mean. Kyle, you know, I mean, you, you know, you've been in oh school my recently. Gosh. Is, is F it's the lowest. Grade? It's the it's lowest, the lowest level. level. <laughs> the lowest <laughs> level, <laughs> man. And it's you it's know, a fifty. It's a fifty-four. It means you gotta take you gotta take the class over again <laughs> twice. Right, 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 right. Before you to Minimum get a passing twice. Grade. Yes, yes, yes. You know, you're not handing in homework. <laughs> you know, you're not going to extra help. This is ridiculous. So that's that's my tweak me and my peak me is that we have a bye week, so I can't be disappointed. Yeah, one and zero against the bye. Right, we are one. <laughs> we will win the bye. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna win the bye. Right, and maybe I'm everybody have in a Vegas. Nice- They'll have a nice vacation and uh, they'll come back refreshed. Um, <laughs> well, more depressed, one or the other. <laughs> go ahead, Kyle. Go, uh, go ahead. You all right. right. So, so tweak me. Uh, what tweaks me the most is that we were out coached um, by the Buffalo coaching staff. Shout out to my guy, um, Jim Salgado, who's the D backs coach. That is my guy. And I root for him personally every day, uh, other than when they're playing the Jets, but he's a New Hyde Park guy. Um, mm. He uh, he's he's been on their staff for a couple of years. He was on Princeton before. Okay. Um, but their coaching staff out coached our coaching staff with a worse team than us and beat us. Um, put forty one points on us. Um, they did so by being imaginative, which we are not. They did so by being energetic, which we are not. Um, they did so by um taking chances, which we don't. Um. You know, I would have loved to have seen us. Did did we run a trick play? Did we try any razzle dazzle there? We haven't all um, year, man. Why start now? Yeah. So I mean, I mean, they they pulled out all the shots and they won a game. And you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if um, you know, if there's people getting fired in that coaching staff at the end of the year too. Um, but for one day, they did what they had to do uh, to beat us. So that tweaks me. Um, to no end. It tweaks me that um, I'm seeing so many starters playing special teams like Jordan Jenkins. I saw covering punt, and um, I, I don't think that he should be doing that. Um, I think that there should be another guy on the team that should be able to cover a punt other than Jordan Jenkins and Brandon Copeland. Well, Brandon Copeland maybe more so because he's sure. more situational, but Jordan Jenkins is a full-time starter and has been for three years. So um, let's, 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 try to get somebody else out there that could do the job. Um, what piques me is that um, I do think we have a good player in Herndon. Um, I think that uh, we have a good player in Elijah McGuire. I think Elijah McGuire uh, could possibly be our starter next year. Um, if, uh, if, if, you know, we see the same kind of getty up from him for the rest of the year. Um, I mean, you're not going to, whether it's Crowell Bilal Powell, um, Elijah McGuire, don't run toss on third and one. <laughs> and uh, and think that NFL speed, every team has yeah. NFL speed to get to the edge. I don't understand it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, they, that that's, I mean, I feel like I've talked a lot, a lot of tweaks already, but that's that's specifically what uh, tweaks, tweaks me and peaks me. All right, so I guess that's me, right? That is me. So I've had it. Uh, so what tweaks me? What tweaks me right now is that I don't remember, and there's a couple I'm, I'm, I'm going to state. So I don't remember the last time we outcoached the other team. I don't remember the, the mm. last time that I felt like we had more talent on our squad than the other team. Mm. Wow. You know, I, what also tweaks me is that I just went through the draft for the Kansas City Chiefs over the last couple of years and realized we could have drafted all those players without moving up in the draft. Mm-hmm. Right? Every single one of those players, Tyreek Hill, their running back, and Mahomes, we could have drafted all of them without actually moving up in the draft. Wow. Let that sink in. <laughs> that's two let that sink ins that you've done today. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You're getting very philosophical. I am. <laughs> it's the it's the pregnant pause. 
<laughs> Be, before you said that, the, the, the before you said that, the only the only um, player that I was lamenting about was Mahomes. But when you bring it home in that way, those other two players, sure. that that depresses me even more. <laughs> Wrap yourself up in your banky. <laughs> All right. Yeah, um, we, we, Adam Thielen, uh, Cooper uh, Cup. Uh, uh, I mean, man, come on. Listen, the, 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 there's the, a lot of guys out there. It's endless. It's endless. It's endless. So, um, just letting that kind of marinate a little bit as far as the the lack of talent on this team, uh, and what we've done with our draft picks over the last couple of years, and what tweaks me the last right now. And I, it really pains me to say this after all of the agony that we expected to see this year is that I don't know if Sam Donald is the best quarterback in this draft. And I know it's early. Right. I know it's early. And, and I know it's too early to say that or to call it. Mm -hmm. But looking at Cleveland and where they're at and the mm -hmm. quarterback that they have and what he's been able to do so far, I would say that's probably what I wanted to see out of my first round draft pick, Sam Donald, this year. Okay. Um, so that's that's disappointing, right? So the, those are my tweak yeah. Um Yeah, but that's one thing you can't blame on McCarry. I can't. No. The, right. the, the right. one. The one yeah. and only thing I can't blame on Because of the gap. The, the, right. The draft capital we would have had to give up, given what we gave up to get Donald to move up to that position. It would have been even more no, impressive. No, no. So, so what? What you do is you 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 bring it back to the year that he should have drafted a quarterback, which is the year before when you had Deshaun Watson and when you oh, had yeah, Pat, yeah. Pat Mahomes. I, I, I agree with that. So, I agree with that totally. So, and I'm get, talking about this, this. No, I get that. I get right, that. I get okay. that. And then I got okay. hundred. It's just that that's the guy. Then we I, wouldn't have needed to draft a quarterback or trade our assets. Two hundred percent. Absolutely. 200%. Yeah, I, I I totally get that. So we, we but get, looking at it from this particular year, this, I would not say that that the decision that was made, given what we have no, had I, at the time. And I'm, yeah. And I'm no way, right. shape, or form saying that we should have moved up to one to draft right. Mayfield. And um, right. I just hate the fact that you know we should have had an option to draft either or <laughs> in that in mm -hmm. the slot that we drafted, and it sucks that we didn't. Mm -hmm. And again, we can go through prior drafts and say, hey man, Mahomes, right. Sean Watson, Myers we all kind of yeah. you know kind of went went for mm -hmm. one of those. Anyway, so what what piques me? I'm actually gonna go outside of Jetland because oh, I need boy. to. Mm -hmm. I can't even I can't. Even, I can't even think about the Jets mm. right now and, and a peak me because I really have to comb through and I still can't find one. I would say David Fisdale peaks me, right? Um, oh, the, the coach of the Knicks right now. Oh, my gosh. Right? I'm in I, love I, with that guy. Right, right. Um, that's the coach that I don't know if there's an NFL equivalent to that for, um, for the Jets mm. out there somewhere. Funky Cole Medina. Right? But but David Fisdale is what piques me right now. I mean, again, the, the it's not like the Knicks have a great record, uh, but the team competes all four quarters. They don't have enough talent to win. So it's kind of similar to the so Jets can't close. in that regard. They right. Can't so they close. can't close. We get that. We mm -hmm. we understand that um fully. But he's developing the players. And you can see him, mm -hmm. you know, the wheels spinning with some of these folks that people haven't been able to get anything out of Dotson. Nothing out of him, mm. right? But he starts, and now he's a D and three guy, who's out there and looks like an NBA player. Right? Wow. Who he looks like that? Bruce Bowen, right? Looks like Bruce Bowen or, or what have you. Yeah. Does doesn't look like it's 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 the players that he's playing against that he doesn't belong in the same court with them, mm -hmm. right? Nilakita, he doesn't play great every game, mm -hmm. but he's out there playing defense. Sometimes he scores sixteen. Sometimes he scores four. Uh, but you know he's out there balling and even, doing even Emmanuel, even Moody Emmanuel. Moody looks like a Moody. different dude, and I Emmanuel was like, Moody. why is he even getting playing time? But yeah. then all of a sudden he's shooting fifty percent, looking good, looking good. Von, running, running I like Vonley too. Yeah, Vonley. Ron, yep. Who is yeah, that dude? Former first round pick. <laughs> I'm like, who is that guy? And we talked. I, I, as soon as they picked up Trier, I sent you guys a text. I got to go look you through did. our text chain. You did. Chain. You did. No, we trust. I was like, we I trust. like that guy. We trust. And Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson looks like he is a. He belongs here. Right. Like he belongs I, here. I had a thought about the Knicks the other day that, um, and tell me if you guys agree with this. I don't think that they have the rookie of the year on their team. But I think they have more good rookies on their team than any other team in the NBA. True. True. And we haven't even seen Knox have it do anything. Yeah, and I'm yet. not including Knox in that. 
I'm yeah, saying you can't, right? I'm saying yeah. Trier, Trier Robinson, um, right there are are very, very good rookies. And um and Knox is gonna be too. Yeah. So and, you got Go ahead. Yeah, you got you got um a lot of good rookies on that team. Yeah. So, that's all I was gonna say. so that that's what I was saying. I'll I'll end it there. I, I think again, that's the the type of coach when we go out and look for somebody. That's the type of individual that you want. Somebody that's going to be in there and be able to develop our young talent um, to play outside of themselves. And that's where we lose somebody like a Hanson who oh, it looked good before, you know, during during training camp. He's like, oh, man, he's pushing for a spot. He's pushing for a spot. Now he's in street clothes. How does <laughs> how does that happen? How all of a sudden you look that bad and you're in street clothes. So, again, Fisdale, um, we get what you, get, what you guys are doing this year, man. Uh, so New York Knicks, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, and that's my peak me. So now you guys have some additional stuff that you wanted to, uh, chat about some, uh, some Baldwin stuff and, uh, and Kyle, you guys want to mention some things as well? Yeah, let's talk about it, Kyle. We, you were talking about, uh, CW post and, um, them moving up to, uh, division one, I think next year or some, sometime going forward and you know, what, what they did. Um, what what did they accomplish this this weekend? Well, we were talking about uh, the Baldwin connection with CW Post, um, LIU. Yeah, I think they call it LIU Post LIU now. LIU Post, yes. I, they, yes. They might have taken out the CW, mm-hmm. um, but uh, there's a, there's a longstanding Baldwin tradition of guys going um, and excelling there. Um, the Beak, the running back, kind of the uh, Beak, number twenty four. Uh, a couple of one, few, few weeks ago, named uh, Player of the Week, uh, week, of, week of October 22nd, something like that. Yeah, I had a player um, from Grand Street Campus when I coached there named Kadeem Huggins that went there, and he was a all-conference DN um, and uh, played in the Arena League a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Dion Mash, who's a receiver, number two, currently on the team right now. But they, Those guys that are currently on the team, they won the, the Northeast 10 Conference uh yesterday mm. it's the third t- third time they've won a conference title in four years right so um uh, to has been there for two years right he's going into no, this is this is right this, i'm sorry yes this is his uh second year this is his second year there he graduated Baldwin with my daughter he's actually my um next door neighbor <coughs> took used to take him to elementary school every once in a while <laughs> I'll drop him off but this guy this this guy is a high character guy i mean um, I would hope, uh, I would love for my son to end up that kind of a, of a football player, that kind of a leader on a team, um, yeah. you know, leading by example, not a big rah-rah guy, but he, he always in the weight room, you know, always, um, um, talking up, talking up to players, um, always being an example by, uh, by doing it on the field and off the field for that matter. Um, a great wrestler at Baldwin, um, but I can't I can't say any I, I can't say too many great words about this guy. Um, great kid. Great kid. Good. And I'm it, glad he's having the success that he's that he's had. I may be off on this, but is it possible that the Beak's mom went to Brooklyn Tech? Um, Vicky. I don't know. Vicky's from out here. I think Victoria is from from out here. From out, OK, because there, 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 there was a. There was a, a mom that I would see at the Lawrence First and Gold Camp every year whose kid played at Baldwin and uh and she had gone to Brooklyn Tech. So um I guess we could fact check that and um and, and I mean you just go next door and knock on the door and find out. <laughs> right. Uh, right. But uh but yeah, there I mean we have a, a, a long history with CW Post like um like you had mentioned, Darren Harris. Yeah, my played, teammate. He, I played. Post. I played right corner. He played left corner. He was the uh, running back. Uh, he went to Post. Uh, graduated. Had a great career there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's currently the uh, uh, the uh, head coach at uh, at Westbury High School JV um, football team. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, and also coaches track there. So uh, I, I cool. chopped it up with him at the uh, Bowen versus Oceanside game. So we were we were definitely <laughs> linked and uh, struggling at the end of that game. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Andrew Kroll is another one. He was a a receiver and a kicker at Baldwin. I would say ten years ago. 
Um, I think he, I think he might have been on the conference championship team, maybe going back to 05, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. But he uh, he coached uh, at Nass Community College. He coached coached at Post. He uh, coached at Fort Hamilton, and now he's at Freeport. Mm-hmm. So he's another guy. But the 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 CW Post thing goes back um, to my father. His one of his best friends, Saul Sendell, was the leading rusher at CW Post for a good 30 years he had the record and wow. he he didn't have a son so um he had like these old cw post athletic shirts um and because i was the only like my dad was his, one of his best friends mm-hmm. and he didn't have a son he gave him to my dad and said you know maybe maybe your son would wear this when he played and i kind of took that to heart and uh i had this his cw post shirt that I wore under my pads every game of high school. And, <laughs> wow. uh, and I had another one that I had given t- to Ron Mossy and uh, my partner in crime at linebacker. And uh, we both wore the CW post shirts. And uh, that's what's up. actually, I, I don't have the shirt anymore because I passed it on to Bobby Gormson and Bobby Gormson wore it. For his career, I hope he watched it at uh, at, at Baldwin. So. <laughs> yeah, hope, hope you watched it first. Hope he watched it. First. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we can go a whole season without watching anything that we wore underneath our uniforms. I mean, that's how I did it. I don't know about y'all, but I don't know. I don't know how many times I watched oh, there's my still, stuff underneath. <laughs> there's still kids doing it. There's definitely still kids. Doing yeah, it. I know my son does. Oh yeah. my gosh! Woo. But I, I, right, I, I guess we, we got we got to find out. We got to find out from Bobby Gormson <laughs> if he still has the shirt or not. But I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> A long-standing CW Post tradition. So, Absolutely. congratulations to uh, to the Post boys, Coach Blount, who used to coach at Baldwin, um, Coach Collins, uh, Coach Gibbons, all those guys. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats. And moving up. Also, congrats moving up to uh, Division One. D1. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, big. that's big. That's huge. That's, that's big. huge. Combining They'll probably have a little bit of a Stony Brook rivalry brewing after that happens, too. You, you, I would hope so. Other. Yeah, I would hope so. Sure. Especially for recruiting. Oh, de- Especially definitely. For recruiting. Definitely. Yeah. Recruiting on Long Island recruits, yeah. All right. All right, man. So let's let's uh I want to say thanks for watching another episode of BKBK podcast. We want to be able to keep bringing you the latest news and viewpoints of where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign superior. So keep watching. You can find us on Facebook on our BKBK podcast fan page, <coughs> Twitter on at @BKBK podcast, I Instagram at @BKBK podcast as well as on YouTube. Just type in BKBK Podcast, hit the like and subscribe button to show the love. That's it. And let's go Jets. Let's go Jets. I'm, I'm glad we got a bye week. Yeah, just a reminder, we're also on uh, Apple iTunes as well. So you can also check us out there. Uh, so Podomatic. Make, Podomatic. So bkbkpodcast.podomatic.com. Or you can go straight to the Apple Podcast and then just search by BKBK and we will pop up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we'll see y'all thanks you guys for watching that's right go next